Glad to be before you once more this day. If you would, be turning over to the book of Matthew. In chapter 3, we'll be reading verses 7 through 10 there. Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 through 10. There it says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not that I that and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. We know from this passage as well as many others that the Jews, particularly the Pharisees and Sadducees of the first century, put more trust, more stock in the fact that they were physical children of Abraham rather than having trust in God. This is seen throughout the ministry of Jesus. Now we would know that if they had indeed studied the scriptures, they would have they have recognized the Savior and His purpose. Jesus points this out to them in John chapter 5 verses 39 through 47. If they had truly believed of of the words that Moses spoke, he would have known who they would have known who he is. He says, because Moses wrote of him. Now in the passage that we read, verses seven through ten of Matthew three, in his statement, John the Baptizer points out at least three things to the Pharisees and Sadducees. First, repentance is necessary to receive salvation, verse eight. We know from Acts chapter 17, verse 30, that all men everywhere are expected to repent of their sins. Now, obviously, there are other steps in order to receive forgiveness of sin. We know biblical faith is required, Romans 10, 17, John 8, 24. And that confession of Christ is required, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, and also baptism, Acts chapter 22, verse 16. But that was the start for them. They needed to repent. Secondly, he points out in verse 9 that physical bloodline does not matter. You see, they put so much stock in the fact that they were indeed children of Abraham that they thought they were safe. They trusted in their heritage to save them. Since they were physical children of Abraham, in their minds they were saved already. This was incorrect. And as pointed out, God was able to make seed of, or children of Abraham from the very stones that were before them. And I think that's a very interesting concept. This showing, though, the ins insignificance of their pedigree. Paul makes this clear regarding his own pedigree, that it's insignificant. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. He also points out that in Christ... All are the same. Colossians chapter 3 verse 11. He also shows who the true children of Abraham are. Galatians chapter 4 verses 21 through 31. He shows the meaning of those two women and their children, Hagar, and ultimately the, the seed of promise. And he compares the two. He calls it an allegory. Makes application to us today. Ultimately pointing to those who will be made free through Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verses 16 through 18. And third, fruit must be produced in order to receive heaven as our reward. Uh, verse, verse 10. Now, this shows the Jewish nation that they had no more use because they served their purpose. Messiah had come. And God used the nations of the world, particularly Roman, the Roman nation, to destroy them. It also points out that those who do not produce fruit will be cast into hell. You see, it would make more sense that the nation of Jews, Jewish nation rather, Israel, 
would have received Jesus the Christ because they were given the Holy Scriptures. They were given the Pentateuch as we know it. They were given all these bound volumes as far as recordings. All this information pointing to the Savior. And they squandered their time. They weren't able to recognize the Messiah. They weren't able to listen to his teachings and understand them and properly apply them. So they went around blind, spiritually speaking. Thus, once Jesus was born, thus he had, when he had fulfilled his purpose in his earthly ministry, the Jewish nation was wiped off. But the one who will be obedient to God must be able to produce fruit. Galatians 5, verse 22 and 24, through 24. And that individual, collectively, we all must be about well-doing. Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Now, many today are just like those Jews of the first century. They don't spend their time in God's Word. They don't know what it means. They don't know what it says. They certainly don't know how to apply it to their own lives. As such, the gospel has real no value to them. No real significance in their lives. And it has the same effect as it did the first century. By and large, the world rejected it. But to those who did accept it, they were saved. And the same is true of us today. If we would accept the gospel, God's power into salvation, we too can be saved from our sins. Unfortunately, it does not appeal to the great host around us. Yet, we must still always be about our Father's business, and that is teaching that same gospel of the first century. Now, as he pointed out, the stones that were around them were able to be made into children of Abraham. The Christian is the spiritual child of Abraham. That was the application made in Galatians 4. And God is able to make us his children, but we do that by obeying his gospel plan of salvation. Are you living it out today? If you're not, why not? Are you a child of God already? And you have given up your first love and given up His teaching? Why not repent this afternoon and be restored as a faithful member of the church? However, if you've not become a Christian, take this time to do so. We've discussed briefly what is necessary to become a Christian. Take those steps now as together we stand and sing.